Karen. Thanks everyone for joining. Um, this uh, this is at the Nourish the Future Ending Hunger Private Sector Pledge, and it's a part of the bigger coalition on zero hunger that we had a two hour session on this morning. I hope some of you were able to catch it. This is the private sector part. It's a critical part of it. And uh, we're gonna tell you a bit about what it is, why it's important and how it might work. But before we do that, let me introduce Peter Backer. Peter is well known to most of you, the, uh, the CEO of WBCSD. He's also um, the chair of the private sector engagement group, and he is on the advisory council or advisory board to this entire food system summit. Peter, over to you. Thanks, Lawrence. Uh, what you don't know is that, that I'm also an ambassador against hunger for the World Food Program. I've been involved in fighting hunger since 2002. And in those days, what triggered my mind was every seven seconds a child dies from hunger. This morning, I'm in Rome. I'm in a rather noisy place. I apologize for that. But I'm in Rome in the middle of the pre summit. This morning, David Vesey, the executive director of the World Food Program, made an opening speech in the plenary in which he said that as a result of COVID, almost 300 million more people are now facing hunger or even starvation. And the number of seconds between children dying from hunger has now come down or gone up actually. Every five seconds, a child dies from hunger. This is the biggest scandal in the food system. And we can talk all we like about the food system transformation, but if we do not solve world hunger, we're not worth the jobs we're all in. And that's really the purpose of the Zero Hunger Coalition. Uh, and of course, the private sector part, the Zero Hunger Nurse the Future Plans that is being launched today. Uh, the plans is really a call for companies to demonstrate how much their planned spending is focused on strengthening small producer space, their organizations, access to tax, extension of finance, cold storage, and then a call to improve that alignment going forward. I'm really happy that a number of companies have already signed up and made commitments, and we commend them for that. But in order to achieve the required $5 billion, we need hundreds and hundreds of companies to follow their lead and sign up. So the Zero Hunger Nurse, the future pledge, will be made an addendum to the business declaration to the Food System Summit. We'll give it our very best shot to get as many companies and organizations uh, signed up to it because it's critical. And I thought David was so absolutely spot on this morning. If you do not solve uh, the world hunger, if you do not avoid children dying from hunger every five seconds, then everything else we're talking about in food system transformation is not worth the uh, paper it's being written in. So I really support this pledge. I really support the effort. I want to thank Lawrence for taking the lead. And I really hope many of you will engage. Thank you. Peter, thank you so much for your support. It means a lot coming from you. And I didn't know that about you. I know lots of things about you, but I didn't know that. So it's good. Um, Peter, if you have to run, please do, but stay as long as you can. Um, I'm going to share a few slides uh, about the pledge just to give you a sense of how, how it works and what it is. Karen, you're going to do that for me. And but before I do this, I just wanted to thank again everybody who's, uh, who's on the call. This is a tough, tough time slot to, to be doing this, so thank you. So this is a very complicated slide, but it shows you uh, what the big coalition is all about and that the, the black... Uh, the black boxes at the bottom tell you that we've now have got 23 member states signed up to this. Uh, I need to add Morocco because they came on board today. We were hoping to have 20 companies for the pre-summit. I think we're up to 13 or 14. Uh, the CEO of PepsiCo told me they were signing it up today. So that's great. And then we've got a lot of civil society organizations um, uh, lined up to, to sign it. I just, I just heard today that CARE is going to join us as well as a civil society group. And they have 7,000 people working for them. That's brilliant. And then we've got lots of multilateral uh, foundations and organizations. And what are we trying to do essentially? We're trying to align everyone's work in the public and private space 
around a number of proven interventions that actually work. So it's a pledge by companies and investment funds to align. And in hoping, and Peter put it brilliantly, in the pledge to align and then to improve the alignment as we move forward. Because, you know, the food system is the private sector, really. Uh, and the private sector is working with farmers. It is working along the value chain. It is reducing hunger, but it can do more. The target is uh, big, as Peter said. Um, initially, we want to get to over a billion, but we want to get to five billion. Uh, and to do that, we have to have hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of companies signing this pledge. Next, please. So the pledge, the, the thing, the bedrock that gives us hope, that makes us think this is not just a piece of fluff, is, is this incredible uh, intellectual work that was done uh, over the past three years by hundreds of organizations and was published last October in a series of reports. It was backed by the German government, by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and many others. And it basically said, there were three or four different studies that all came together at the same time. And they all basically said, actually, if we, if we invest in the right places, in these high impact proven interventions, that have been vetted and evaluated properly, we can, if we double our investment, if, if governments and donors double their investment in these areas, we can deal with 500 million, uh, uh, we, can, we can reduce hunger by 500 million. And we're talking mostly about chronic hunger, but there is, there is also uh, obviously a very key part of the acute hunger equation that needs to be built out. And I'm delighted that WFP is here to help us do that. So these are the reports. I'm not gonna get into too much detail, but we can, we can get hunger down to less than 200 million. Uh, and that's 2% that's of the population in 2030. Next, please. So the, the 10 investment areas are really in these three buckets. Uh, empowering the excluded, which is about farmer organizations, rural youth offering, and a big investment in scaling up social protection, a bundle of stuff on the farm. It's about extension services, um, interventions, technology, uh, finance, um, quality of, uh, of infrastructure. And then the third bucket is food on the move, uh, which is about the infrastructure, post-harvest loss, cool chains. And the right-hand side column, you can't read it, it's too much detail, but the right-hand side column gives companies examples of the kinds of things that they do or can do that match up to these 10 areas. So this really is the backbone. This gives us confidence that we actually can make a dent in hunger and we're not having this conversation again in 10 years time. Next, please. These are the countries. So it's about the 10 actions, but it's also about focusing in on the countries where, where hunger is, is the most uh, severe. So it's, uh, we obviously focus on the countries in red and orange and pink. Next, please. How will it work? Um, as I said, it's a pledge to align. It's a pledge to align. And then, and then hopefully as we go forward, it's a pledge to improve the alignment, thereby bringing more resources into play to help reduce hunger in those 10 areas. Uh, a company that signs up doesn't have to have stuff in all of the 10 areas. It can have stuff in one or two of these areas in one or two of the countries. Think of it as a massive matrix, 10 uh, columns and 50 rows. Where are, where are you currently spending money? Where are you planning to spend money? Not in terms of foundations or, um, or um, CRS, but in terms of your basic everyday operations and, and cap, cap investments. Um, we are announcing it today. Um, the, the support for this pledge is provided by FAO. And again, you can see Grow Africa, Grow Asia, ISD, World Benchmarking Alliance, WBCSD, WEF, and WFP. We're going to launch it in the summit in September with over, over 100 companies. Um, we know that's going to happen. And then after that, we will establish a secretariat and the pledge will be implemented globally. And we'll have annual or maybe biannual pledging and reporting conference and WBA uh, are being incredibly supportive and cooperative, uh, talking about special issues on hunger in terms of the reporting they do. 
Next, please, Karen. And you know, uh, these are the these these is these are the companies that are on board already, and we just added Pepsi today. And I, I just want to say the the same thing I said uh, at the coalition discussion this morning. By the way, we had eight ministers and two CEOs and and a whole range of other groups there. It was phenomenal. And we've got another two ministers who are going to who are going to um, tell us about their support for this coalition in the closing ceremony on Wednesday. The, the two that didn't present today but will present then are the governments of Nigeria and governments of Pakistan. So we have big member states who are supporting this, this pledge. Um, so this morning I said there are four firsts here. The, the first first is that we are, it's the first time I can ever remember where we've had increases in hunger that are so extraordinarily large, 20% overall, 50% in West Africa, 33% in Southern Africa, 20% in South Asia. This is unprecedented. The second first is that for the first time, we have a set of solutions that are going to take us pretty close to zero hunger, pretty close. The, the third first is what Peter said. If a food system transformation doesn't address hunger, then people are not going to take us seriously. Uh, that doesn't mean we have to end hunger the way we would have done it in the 20th, 20th century. It means we do it differently. We do it in ways that pay attention to climate, that are consistent with the Paris Climate Agreement, that are going to be generating good livelihoods for low-income people, that are going to be crowding in private sector investment locally. Um, the, these are, this is a food systems approach to hunger reduction. And the, the final first is that actually, you know, it sounds a bit corny, but we are the first generation that has the possibility to actually end hunger. And that's the most important first of all. Thank you, Karen, for the, the slides and let's get, let's get to it. So who are some of our prospective partners in this endeavor? So we're very lucky to have uh, Valerie Ogunieri, who is an assistant executive director at the World Food Program. I've known Val Valerie for a very long time, and I know she is a very serious and determined hunger fighter. Valerie, over to you. Well, thanks so much, uh, Lawrence. And, and just circling back to, to, to a little bit of, um, of what Peter hinted at, um, we, you know, we, when we see how global hunger is, is rising with 811 million chronically hungry people, according to the state of food insecurity, 270 million people facing acute hunger due to conflict, the climate crisis, and COVID exacerbated economic issues. And then when we know that children pay the heavy price of this for malnutrition with 149 million stunted children under fives, that lifelong impact that stunting has, 45 million children wasted with life-threatening consequences, then we know that food systems aren't working for all and that when we talk about transforming food systems as we're so focused on here at, at the pre-summit and moving into the food system summit, uh, we have to be talking about hunger and we all have a role to play. Um, in the UN system, organizations like the World Food Program and the Food and Agriculture Organization that have food in their, uh, in, in their name, um, but also uh, the you know, hundreds, thousands of civil society organizations, and yes, the private sector. And this is why the Hunger Coalition and the Zero Hunger Pledge are so important. As you laid out, Lawrence, this provides us with that, that, that template, the, 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 the roadmap and implementing the sustainable development goals that can get all stakeholders on board to be looking at how they can contribute to ending hunger by lining up behind proven interventions that work and helping take those to scale. And, and that framing is so very important. And it's not only the right thing to do, it's the smart thing to do because investing in food uh, security is an investment also in market success and an investment in, in, in the future. So as you highlighted, the pledge isn't about corporate social responsibility though, you know, and, and donations and grants, that's always welcome. Uh, but as you hear more about the pledge from our distinguished uh, speakers, I hope that everybody present will be inspired to join us in this fight against, against hunger. 
sector. We've got great examples of how we've been working with the private sector. We met Peter uh, decades ago when he was heading TNT and we worked at how do you bring the logistics know-how into the fight of ending hunger, working with DSM to ensure that we improve the availability of affordable uh, nutritious products on the market and help address hidden hunger through interventions like going to scale with rice fortification. And with Mundi, we've just launched a technical partnership this year aimed at improving packaging packaging in a manner that helps ensure that food can be transported. So these are all areas where we work already with the private sector. With this pledge, we have the opportunity to go to scale behind proven interventions, working together across the sectors. So super excited, super committed to be part of this. Thanks, Lauren. Oh, that's, thank you. That's music to my ears and to all of our ears. Uh, without you, we, are, we would be lost. So thank you. Um, now I'd like to turn over to Ibrahim uh, Guruza. Ibrahim, I'm not, I don't know you, so it's lovely to meet you. You're the Chief Operating Officer at Grow Africa and uh, at, at uh, NEPAD as well. Ibrahim. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Lawrence. Pleased to meet you as well, and a great, great evening. Um, as Grow Africa, we really uh, welcome um, this, uh, this initiative. As you probably know, um, Grow Africa has specialized over uh, the, the past years now in um, bridging the gap uh, between the public and the private sector. So um, we have today um, footprints in 16 African countries in various value chains, which are priorities for um, uh, ag agricultural transformation in those countries. So we understand that um, making a pledge, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's something, uh, but turning, uh, which needs to be commended, of course, but turning those pledges into concrete um, program and projects um, for agricultural transformation, at least for the case of Africa, it's another challenge. So we as Go Africa, we have specialized in assisting and in helping those private sector companies, uh, both domestic and international, to convert those um, pledges or commitment into real investment in, uh, in, in, in uh, priority agricultural value chains. In the last past two, um, two years, we have been able to mobilize half a billion dollars of private sector investment in priority agricultural value chain, like your to uh, potato in Kenya, your rice in Cote d'Ivoire, your soya bean in Mozambique, horticulture in uh, uh, Iswatini, and so forth and so on. So we really uh, welcome this initiative, and then we are ready to work with uh, the other partners within um, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this group in order to convert those, uh, those, uh, those uh, pledges into a program and project. Um, and we have the know-how, and then we, for Go Africa, you can count on us um, to 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 work hand in hand in in this uh, in this play. I want uh, I've been told that I have two two minutes, uh, so I want to keep it short and straight to the point, and then uh, over over to you back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ibrahim. That's brilliant. Um, so you see, we get uh, a pledge, and then our colleagues at Grow Africa will begin to turn those into commitments. And then someone needs to track the commitments. And that's why we're so lucky to have the World Benchmarking Alliance as part of this pledge. And I turn to Sana Hildeman, who's the lead research at the BBA. Sana. Good evening. Hi, Lawrence. Thank you very much. And thank you for giving us the floor this evening during this important event. We're really pleased to be here. My name is Sana Hildeman. I'm lead research for the Food and Agriculture Benchmark at the World Benchmarking Alliance. Um, WBA is a not-for-profit not organization that develops uh, and publishes uh, free and publicly available benchmarks that assess um, the performance of um, private, uh, private companies in addressing the SDGs, particularly the Food and Agriculture Benchmark, of which the first iteration will be published in September during uh, the Food Systems Summit will assess the performance of 350 companies along the food value chain, taking a food systems approach, um, assessing um, their performance on key topics in the areas of nutrition, environment, and social, where the benchmark not just looks at companies' own operations, but also, for example, their impact in supply chains, particularly also in the regions, the priority regions that you just um, uh, shared with us. We strongly uh, support this Zero Hunger Pledge as we think it can be a really powerful tool to mobilize a private sector action and to ensure dedicated investments that play part in addressing hunger worldwide. We also think that accountability is key. Um, independently assessing uh, these corporate pledges 
towards this common goal. Um, and a way to also um, uh, discuss progress in, uh, and way forward in a very inclusive and multi-stakeholder manner, which is also uh, the way that we work at WBA. So we strongly support this pledge, we support you. Um, we want to work um, with uh, all the stakeholders involved, including GAIN, Grow Africa, Grow Asia, uh, IFPRI, ISSD and, uh, and Cornell University that are all hosting this, uh, this event. Uh, to explore the uh, further development of the uh, monitoring mechanism uh, to support uh, the Zero Hunger Pledge and within the framework uh, of the Food and Agriculture Benchmark, ensuring that such a framework is uh, easily accessible for companies big and small, but also making sure that we're not reinventing the wheel or um, uh, developing something new, but that we can do it in the framework uh, of what is already there. So thank you again uh, and looking forward to uh, further discussions uh, coming up. Thank you, Sana, and thank you for reminding us that uh, about all the organizations that are supporting this launch. Uh, that's very good of you to do that. So we've been talking about companies as if they're not here, but three of them are here, four of them really are here, and let's hear from them. So uh, let's hear, first of all, I think, and we, colleagues, we don't have a lot of time, but let's hear from uh, Takaki and Nishi. Uh, Nishi-san, over to you. I am Takaki Nishi, President and CEO of the Ajinomoto Group. We are very honored to be part of this conversation. Ending hunger is a complex and challenging issue. However, the need for action is clear. There is an achieved pathway in front of us through this pledge. I am delighted to express the Ajinomoto Group's support for the Zero Hunger nourish the future private sector pledge. We believe a world without hunger can be achieved through the idea of nutrition without compromise, where nutrition is achieved without compromising taste, access, and the local way of life. I am inspired by the work we have done thus far in 2009, we launched the Ghana Nutrition Improvement Project to address malnutrition among infants and children. Through this effort, we developed CocoPress, a protein and micronutrient powder that provides key nutrients such as the essential amino acid rising. Today, this project benefit more than 200,000 people each year. Currently, we are de developing a more affordable, ready-to-use therapeutic, therapeutic food, or RUTF, that use soya, maize, and sorghum. It will offer the same nutritional quality as current RUTFs made with peanuts and milk, but for 10% lower production cost. I am excited for what is ahead, and I applaud and welcome others in the private sector that also bury the significance of this initiative. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Takaki uh, Nishi from uh, uh, Ajinomoto, and it's, it's great because he really provides a nice link from this summit through to the Nutrition for Growth Summit, and he provides in Japan, and he provides a nice link with what Valerie was talking about, um, the, the most vulnerable, the very young children. Um, now we're really lucky to have Caroline Keeling, who's the CEO of Keeling's. Caroline, thank you so much, over to you. Good afternoon, and thank you for inviting me to speak today. Just to introduce myself, I am Caroline Keeling, the CEO of Keeling's, a third generation family business headquartered in Ireland, operating throughout Europe, Central and South America and Asia. We grow and source fruits and vegetables from 47 different countries around the world, and we license software to run produce businesses. I'm delighted to be working to support the Zero Hunger Nourish the Future pledge. After 95 years in business, we reviewed Keeling's purpose earlier this year, 
And as a family, shareholders agree that our purpose is better food, better world. This simple statement means a lot to us as a family in business. And we know that it means a lot to all of our people who work alongside us. We are proud that as a team, we are continually striving to make food and what we all eat better through what we grow, the quality improvements and innovations we make, and the stories we tell. We are also very aware of our impact on the world, both environmentally and socially, and are very consciously planning to positively manage our impact on the world in the present and consistently into the future. So the Zero Hunger Nourish the Future Pledge, we believe fits our purpose and will help give us direction on how we can have the most impact in what we do, particularly in the priority countries. As we considered what we could pledge within the guidelines, we identified a project we are developing in Morocco, where we are looking to pay a premium to help the growers develop a tomato line and support the local community. We are doing this project with the support of a retailer in the UK, and we will be talking to the teams organizing the pledges to see how we could develop this project in a way that we share it with the retailer. I do believe that involving the global retail buyers in the pledge will be very important in achieving the goal of targeting 5 billion investments in the right areas. So I hope that we can be an example of how a retailer and supplier work together to align investment in the areas which will have the most impact. I believe in year one of the pledge, we can make a small contribution to the investment required, but each year we can build on these projects to create much larger investments, which will generate impacts for many years to come, ideally long after 2030. Thank you for your attention. Thanks for the opportunity to join your session. Few things are more important than achieving zero hunger. I'm Hanukkah Faber, and I'm the president of Foods and Refreshments at Unilever. And in that role, I really like the list of 10 high impact areas for investment against hunger. They're a really great guide for the private sector. They're supported by really strong scientific evidence, and they offer a practical guide for implementation. Let me give you two examples of where Unilever is already investing according to these principles. First, on the farm. On the farm, we support regenerative agricultural practices, ones that are economically viable for farmers. Knorr, our biggest brand, has invested in 145 programs since 2011, many in Africa and some around the world. One example right now in the area of water scarcity is an investment with rice supplier Riviana, where we're implementing a suite of farming practices that reduce time that soil is flooded. And of course, that preserves water and in turn reduces emissions. Second, the area of empowering the excluded. Unilever committed last year to help equip 10 million youth, young people with essential skills by 2030. Prabhat, which is our sustainability community initiative in India, is a great example of this already in progress. Our Prabhat livelihood centers around India support women and youth for better livelihoods and incomes. And we do that in collaboration with NGOs and social enterprises. Now, these are just two examples of the work and investments we're already making at Unilever. With our new 1 billion euro climate and nature fund, we intend to make many more, and the 10 high impact areas that you've outlined are really, really helpful as we do so. I know we're not the only ones. I know many others in the private sector will be doing the same thing, and I really appreciate your leadership, your support, and your collaboration. Thank you. Thank you, Hanukkah. That was obviously a trick question. Um, Obviously not Caroline, but Hanukkah. Um, great to have her and Unilever on board. Karen, have we, is, that, is, that the, is that finished? No, we still have um, Julia Friedrich Arnold from BASF, but representing the German, representing the private sector on the German delegation. So yes. Julia, thank you, Julia. Over to you. 
Thanks, Lawrence. Thanks, Karen. Good evening and good day to everyone. I'm really happy to get a short opportunity to have a statement here. I'm a member of the German member state delegation representing the private sector, and we are enthusiastic to share our views on behalf of the German agribusiness with its small, medium and larger size enterprises. You have actually seen two of them already on Lauren's last slides. So listening attentively today to the first day of the United Nations Food Systems Pre-Summit, we still see that there is an important and major gap to bridge between the need for more food, healthy, nutritious food, and the offer produced as sustainably as possible with an increased productivity and an urgent resource protection. Consensus has been found though that we need a system transformation and that we need to accelerate and multiply our collective call to action. And we need fast and adequate investments in technology and agricultural innovation to support this encouraging speed with which this transformation is happening. For these new technologies to be effective in supporting the zero hunger goal, they have to be evaluated, applied and scaled respecting international standards and based on science and newest evidence. And we have seen today how dynamic and how vocal the science aspect has been in the whole run up to this summit and the voices of academia and science are finally heard. We as the agricultural industry are ready to play our part and we will continue to adapt modern farming inputs to local needs in the area of seed and nutrition but also machinery and digitalization. And as was mentioned earlier, certainly in post-harvest management tools that are so crucial, especially to the countries of the global South. We have been working in close cooperation with multiple partners over the last years. We have been encouraged by the special initiative for World Without Hunger at the German Federal Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development under the strong and passionate guidance of Minister Müller to bring together actors from all stakeholder groups. So with this experience, we appreciate the opportunity to continue to cooperate across border sectors and stakeholders. And I'm very honored and I take it as a duty to take your messages and your energy back to the German business and companies to make your voice and your pledge heard and discuss further steps up to the September summit in New York. Thanks Lawrence for the opportunity. Thank you, Julia. That's, that was really nice. Um, so we have about uh, 15 minutes for uh, comments, questions, answers. I see we have a, a question or no, not a question, but a comment in the chat box about will we add a do no harm principle? Um, my understanding is that that this pledge will have that. Um, WBA, do you want to comment on that at all? Or Karen, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, I would just comment on the, I mean, as you say, on the do no harm principle, I mean, I can't speak about the UNFSS more broadly, but certainly this pledge um, is about attracting much needed private sector investment into the agriculture sector to complement the role of the public sector. Um, so this is not about replacing the role of the, the, the public sector, it's about complementing it and bringing in much needed private sector investment into these 10 priority areas. Um, I think the do no harm principle is also going to be um, um, implemented by making sure that companies uphold and respect the laws and regulations of the countries that they operate in. And I think that is a central principle to making sure this works. And it's why the pledge is very much surrounded by implementing partners who are working on the ground who do have a part of country partnerships, country processes linked to the country's own identified national priorities. So the implementation happens at the country level, not at the global level. And it has to be in line with countries' laws and regulations and in partnership with the partners that are here today with you, FAO, WFP, um, Grow Africa, Grow Asia, et cetera. Thank you, Karen. Um, colleagues, comments, questions, and uh, if you could watch watch in the chat box for me, that would be very helpful. There's a comment from Lise uh, from Norway, Lise Albrechtsen. Um, what's the connection synergy between the pledge 
and the coalition. Karen, do you want to pick that one up? I mean, sure. that, that, before you do, I mean, the most obvious answer is that the 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 ten areas and the fifty countries is is going to uh, allow us uh, a first cut set of alignment. But Karen, beyond that. Yeah, I mean, I think the idea is that the Zero Hunger Coalition is a much broader, bigger coalition that includes, as Lawrence showed earlier, government, civil society, um, farmers' organizations, international organizations, international development banks. And this pledge sits inside that coalition as the private sector's contribution to the broader coalition. So I think that's how we're seeing it. And I think the other important connection or synergy is with the business declaration that Peter Backer um, spoke about at the opening of this session. So just to add that other connection or synergy. And the connection maybe with Hand in Hand, maybe you could talk a bit about that. Yeah, so, so I think Maximo um, in the session, the morning session today, Lawrence, that you were um, chairing, um, spoke about how the, the three Rome-based agencies are gonna be working together to make this um, zero hunger coalition um, a reality and working on the ground both with WFP's existing operations with FAO's new hand in hand initiative those would be the partnerships on the ground that the companies who pledge would be working with to implement their their commitments but uh, but least um, to be developed over the next two months and beyond good question thank you We've got a question from how we will select implementing partners from Leah Tronell. That sounds like it's for you, Karen. Okay, I'll try take that. So thanks, Leah, for that question. Um, um, companies will be free to choose their own implementing partners, but we strongly are encouraging companies to um, work with our implementing partners. And as you saw on the slide, our imp implementing partners are first and foremost, the Rome-based agencies, so FAO, WFP, we're hoping IFAD will come on board. But then also, as you heard from Ibrahim, Grow Africa and Grow Asia. And Grow Africa, importantly, is part of the African Union Development Agency, and so very strongly linked to the African Union's agenda. And given how important or how much of a priority Africa is for this pledge and for this work, I think it will be really important um, working with these partners. Um, the reason for working with these partners is to ensure they are aligned, that the pledges and the commitments that companies make are aligned with national priorities and national development plans. Um, and so that's the guiding principle for selecting implementing partners, making sure that they are organizations that are working with governments, with countries, working on what countries have decided are their national priorities and are aligned to those national priorities. But I think, Karen, we will have to write down exactly what the, um, the principles are that lead us to certain implementing partners. So it's a, a good question and a good comment. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to thank you for being here. The, the number of companies will grow. Um, the pledge will develop and we will keep, we're gonna have um, two or three meetings in between the pre-summit and the summit to further develop the pledge. Uh, that's what the secretariat tells, tells us they need us to do, but we were gonna do it anyway. And we'll, we'll try to make those as open and transparent as as possible. Um, I'd like to thank Karen, who's been extraordinary in, in helping to drive this forward. Uh, and I'd like to thank all of you. All of you have been incredibly generous with your time and with your ideas and, and with your goodwill. So, um, you know, can companies, can companies contribute to ending hunger? A lot of people think the answer is no, but I think this pledge will make them think again. So. Thank you all very much and good evening, good night and good afternoon. Karen, back to you. Any, any final words from you? No, thank you. And nope. thank you to all of our partners for helping yeah. drive this forward. And we're looking forward to working with everybody to make this happen at the summit. Yeah, and uh, thanks to uh, all our speakers and panelists who gave um, talks and videos uh, at pretty short notice. We appreciate it. Thank you.
Good night, everyone.